I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. Really pleased that you join us tonight and I think we've got a real special message tonight. We've got Barbara Dunbar here with us. Hello, Barbara, Bishop Earl. How hello. Are you? <laughs> and it's sure nice to have you here and hear Thanks. your story. I it's know it's a, it's a great story and I, I think it'll be really interesting to people. You were actually a convert to the church, is that right? Yes. At mm -hmm. age 16? Yes. Tell us about your life maybe bef just before 16 and then okay. coming out to, or coming into Mormonism. Well, I was from a typical dysfunctional family, oh, alcoholism <laughs> and oh, my dear. dad married my mother's sister, that kind of stuff and oh, everything. Yeah. And I remember when I was like in second or third grade, I'd cry myself to sleep every night and I'd cry to God and he'd say, I'm here for you. So I really? kind of always knew that God loved me. Wow. But as the years went on, you know, I would drink and smoke, and my mom was, you know, quite a drinker. I, come from a, I say I came from a long line of alcoholics instead of pioneers, you know. Wow. But um, anyway. Uh, but that affected you as, yeah. a, as a child. And yeah, and I was pretty, you know, of course I became very controlling because I couldn't control anything. Oh. So I was looking for the true church, whatever church it could be. I thought it was a Catholic because there were so many of them back yeah. in New England. I was from New England. Yeah. So um, one day I was hanging out with a friend of mine, an older friend, and um, she was dating other guys, cheating on her husband, things like that. Oh, dear. And <laughs> next thing I know, some missionaries were knocking at the door in the middle of August in these suits and ties, you know? Yeah. And they came in, and I was getting in the fridge to get a beer, and uh, <laughs> They uh, were sitting there, and I thought, that guy's kind of cute. It's too bad he's all dressed up like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so... Um, yeah, but they were just a couple of years older, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I was... Uh, so he, he left and went to another mission, so therefore he could write to me. Oh. But I had been studying other religions, you know, and I studied everything from Buddhism, Helen Keller, Catholicism. But I'd also gone to the Baptist Church all my life. Oh, yeah. And I don't know how this happened, but I, like, learned the 23rd Psalm, and I learned about the Sermon on the Mount. I had wonderful friends there. Yeah. Christian friends. Yeah. Yeah. But I knew, um, when I heard, heard about the church, the biggest thing that converted me was the Word of Wisdom. Here you, <laughs> here you were <laughs> breaking the Word of Wisdom. And, and because I thought, wow, if this kid, Joseph Smith, 14 years old, could get that inspiration from God. And if nobody drank or smoked anymore, what a great yeah. world it would be. Yeah. So when I heard about that, and I heard more about the church, I believed it was true. Wow. So I joined. You got baptized, your parents were okay with that? Uh, yeah, well, it was just my mother. Okay. And she gave me my last drink the night before I joined the church. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> said, okay, now you're in the... Yeah, I, she said, I know you'll do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. So she, tr good. she trusted your integrity yeah. and all that. She did. Yeah, yeah. it was great. So, so, so you, you were back in Connecticut, right? Yeah. Is that mm -hmm. where it was? So did you stay there then? I was that? there about two years and I wanted to come out to Zion. I wanted to be oh, with all the saints. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And I knew the guy I was going to marry was at BYU. So I had all these things in my head. You didn't know him, but you knew he was going to be there. BYU. So yeah. I went to Rick's college because I wasn't ready to get married. Okay. So it was Rick's back then. I guess yes, it's BYU, Rick's BYU uh, Idaho. Idaho uh -huh. now. Yeah. Yeah. And so 
you're taking institute classes and so on? Oh, yeah. I went to seminary back in um, Connecticut. Oh, you did? I traveled 20 miles every morning to seminary and back. Oh, early morning? Yeah, early morning oh, seminary. Wow. Really liked it. There was only three of us LDS in our high school. Yeah. yeah, and you're studying a lot about the church and um, Joseph Smith and Book of Mormon. I mean, you read. I only yeah. studied what they told me, you know. Okay, whatever the assignment yeah. was. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't study church history. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> so. But it would have been their their version of church history too. Yeah, so. yeah. So yeah. what did you learn at Rick's? Anything special there? And I learned that it's a wonderful man there that I married. Oh, is that where you met? <laughs> That's where I met Rusty. Yeah. Your, your husband, Rusty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I went there and the kids would make fun of me because I was from back east and I would lay outside in my bikini and <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really, um, the culture was kind of slow for me. Oh, but, was it? But I loved being with the saints. You know, I thought, yeah, you know, I'm going to be with people. Be. This is the place and yeah. this is where God wants me to be. Yeah. So, so you. Now, was Rusty a return missionary? Had you had yeah. a goal of marrying a return missionary? Oh, or yeah. Anything like that? Yeah, or? I was going to go on a mission and be a psychologist, marry a return missionary. Oh, you were going to go on a mission. Yeah. But Rusty yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, made other plans for you. Rusty had plans like you did. Get yeah. off your mission and get married get and fill, married. The ha fill a car station wagon with kids. And that's yeah. exactly what he did. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. So... Uh, it, it, you're active then with yeah. him. You get married in the temple, I guess. Yep. Yeah, married in the temple. Yeah. Which temple was it? Uh, Manti. Oh, okay. I knew him eight days, and he asked me to marry him. Oh, boy. And his mother said no. Yeah. But um, we got married about three months later, six months later. Oh, good. Good yeah. for you. And children? Five children, Five 12 kids. wonderful grandchildren. Oh, that's yeah. neat. Okay. So you're active now in, in oh, the yes. church and active just raising goer. and living life and doing yeah doing normal things uh -huh. and how yeah. long does this last and oh well, let me see i was a member of the church for 42 years yeah tell us uh, y you were married in the temple but i know you actually worked in the temple and you were very active going to the temple much better than i was i must say so shame on you i, I know <laughs> how uh, how many times did you go to the temple um, I figured it out. It was ab about, probably an average of 912 times. Oh, my goodness. Three hours a time. Yeah. It's about three months, three to four months. Yeah. Did, did you ever question anything in the temple ceremony or what you were experiencing there? I definitely did. I would look across the aisle and see men over there and the women on the other side, and I would think, are we the only ones who are going to go and be with Jesus? You know, like am I really that exclusive? Pretty select group. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other thing I would question is uh, when, uh, you know, long ago they had the um, Baptist preacher who would come up and he would say, Satan came up to him and said, what are you doing here? And he said, I'm teaching the gospel, you know, scripture, yeah. word of life mingled with scripture, however they do that. Right. And I was kind of offended. The philosophies of men mingled, mingled with Mingled with scripture, yeah. yeah. I was kind of offended because I, you know, had nice Baptist preachers I knew and stuff. Yeah. And you felt like they were pretty honest, decent yeah, people. Yeah. And, and then I couldn't understand why Satan in the end would say, if you don't live up to all of the commandments you get this day in this temple, you will be in my power. Why is Satan in the temple when it's such a spiritual place? And why is he giving us instruction? Yeah. I always thought it was interesting that the that he wore an apron too. Yeah. And I know for the LDS that might be listening to this conversation, all of this is on the internet. Yes. So uh -huh. it's not like, I mean, I know it's secret and sacred and all that stuff, but still we know Satan wears, and it just seems so strange that he would have power yeah. and... That would be an emblem of his powers and then know. we put it on. Well, and then to, to deceive Eve uh, and tell her that w they can become gods and know mm -hmm good and evil and all that stuff. So the 1990 changes, you noticed those, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. There were mm -hmm. a couple of other changes too, and you'd gone yeah. so many times, I guess you noticed those yeah. changes too. Mm -hmm. Did mm -hmm. you think that that was strange to have a second level of inspiration here? No, I just really, I just believed blindly that um, whatever they did was the right thing. <laughs> I, liked, I liked being told what we to do. We just kind of go yeah. right along, don't yeah. we? 
Uh -huh. Well, I thought it was strange in just in the funny sense that I felt like if the, you know, we pass by the angels that mm -hmm. somebody's going to have to say, well, these guys went through before 1990 and these guys went after 1990. <laughs> so they're going to have different, different thises and different thats to, to, you know, tokens and signs and all that stuff. I just thought it was... Well, what was really kind of interesting, strange. one time I was in there and they said, have you stand up if you forget the name they gave you? Yeah. So I forgot and I stood up. And uh, I went back, just as I went back, the lady whispered my name to me. And I thought, oh, this has got to be the true church. She knows my name. And she didn't even tell me before. You mean somebody sitting next to you? Or no, something? the oh, worker. The, oh. Yeah. You well, <laughs> all the workers and all the temples have the same name that, on that day. On that day. Wow. That, now that blew me away. You thought yeah. it was inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So you served... Uh, with Rusty and on an inner city mission, I yeah. understand. And yeah. what other callings did you have? Mm, I was actually a uh, counselor in the 12-step program for many years. Yeah. That, see, we, we were in Colorado, and my sister-in-law had called and said, are you coming out to Utah to sell real estate with me? And I thought, yeah, that's great. I'd like to. And I was ready to move, leave. And yeah. I prayed, and the Lord said, you can go, but it's going to be for a much bigger reason than what you think. Wow. Then I talked to Rusty about it, and we decided to sell our house and came out here, and it was a much bigger reason than I thought <laughs> because I came to Zion to find Christianity again. Wow. It was great. Now, yeah. what, uh, what other callings did you have? I know you were a gospel doctrine teacher at some point. Yeah, when, as soon as I went out to Rick's, um, they called me to be a gospel doctrine teacher in the church two years. Wow. Yeah. And did you learn anything there that was... Not confusing, or but uh, question. It was just question? difficult because all the returned missionaries came to my class, oh, and you know you were the cute little teacher there. And I think that was it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, back to the temple. The pro probably the biggest problem I have with the temple was you know I came from a, a dysfunctional family. I never felt worthy. Well, going through the temple because I couldn't get the right answers. They kept saying, someday you'll know, someday you'll know, someday oh. you'll get it. I didn't feel worthy. And when I look back now, all those years of going that I didn't feel worthy because I wasn't getting the answers. Oh, um, my goodness. I am so glad I'm free of that. Yeah. That Jesus loves me just the way I am. So you had you know? guilt or frustration oh, that you frustration. didn't. frustration, yeah, because yeah. I wanted the answers. And I thought, but then there was one time I was in there, I was praying, and this friend of mine, you know, she was having visions and stuff, and I said, uh, I said, God, why don't I hear those things? Why can't I see those things? And he clearly said to me, you don't need them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 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 Did you realize that uh, masonry was a big part of the temple? I didn't know it then. No, I didn't know it at all then. All the but times you went through? Thing. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. saw the all-seeing eye and... Oh, and yeah, I had no stuff. clue, you know. The I just handshakes were all masonry. and No, I had no clue. I didn't no know clue. that either. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. So. Well, so what happens to kind of... Uh, now, another thing we wanted, I wanted to bring up is uh, an experience you had with a friend in the front seat of a car one day. Oh. <laughs> Tell us about that a little bit. Shortly after I joined the church, you know, that was, what, 1967 or something? My best friend was black. Oh. And, you know, we had a, she, her and her mom came to pick me up, and that's when you had the station wagons with the full-length seat going across. Right, right. So she puts me in the front seat between her and her mom. And she said, hey, Mom, tell Barbara how the Mormon church doesn't accept the blacks. And I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> and you'd never heard that. Huh? They are so accepting and loving. And uh, the point was that they didn't accept the priesthood. Yeah. She just said that. So I went to my bishop and asked him about it, yeah. and he explained it away, and I was fine. And we were still friends. You were okay. Yeah, I still just believed whatever they <laughs> told me. Well, so what happens to kind of change things a little bit? Uh, let me see. Okay, so um, it was about, Rusty and I have been married about 38 years, and uh, I was on my way to serve a health mission in California to Optimum Health Institute in California where they serve, they um you eat raw foods and you drink wheatgrass instead of eating wheat and stuff like oh. that to help people cure from cancers and oh, stuff. Okay. And uh, we had really had a rough time. We'd had a rough marriage. We had a lot of things going on. Our kids were grown. Um, you know, I think we were ready to go our own way, a separate way. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And so we were getting ready to go. Rusty decided he wasn't, didn't believe in the church anymore. He wasn't active in the church. He had broken his back from work. He had worked a lot. He was always a big worker. and. Um, then he broke his back, oh. and um, 
So he had and you're saying he didn't believe in the church? Did, yeah. Did that bother you? I guess you'd go. Yeah, it really bothered me because yeah. I went to church. I just went, I was happy, happy camper. I would just go to church, be happy, and talk to people. And disappointed in him, I'm sure. Yes, I was. I was very disappointed because I thought that was the only thing we had to cling to, left yeah. to cling to, was the church. Right. And um, I remember when I married him years ago, I said, um, you know, Sometimes you act so awful, but you know you got such a big spirit in there. I just, you yeah. know, it's so great. Yeah. And but you know, so what happened was he didn't believe in the church anymore, and he was questioning everything. And uh, you know, like I said, he had a broken back, so he's out of work for the first time so we're together. So he been studying one -on -one. or just he started working? studying. He decided he'd study the Bible over again. I mean, the Book of Mormon for the hundredth time yeah. and read the commentary. He got nothing out of it. So we have a really good friend from Colorado who had also kind of planted seeds along the way. So he started reading the Bible. Uh oh, and that's bad. <laughs> oh, it was great. He started reading the Bible and he started to come alive. It was really great. Wow. Yeah, but he'd still sit and tell me, you know, the church this and this, he'd study church history. Yeah. And I go, I don't want to hear it. It hurts my heart, you know, I'm mm -hmm. out of here. And so I said, if you can tell me something true and something good, I'll listen, tell me good things. So I just remember one night he started reading me the Bible and I go, wow, I thought Joseph Smith said that. No, that's right here in the Bible. I thought he said that. No, it's right here in the Bible. And you know, and I had always, even when I was young, I was concerned that I wouldn't understand the parables, therefore I wouldn't know Jesus very well. Oh yeah. But he would read them to me and they just were so clear. And I just, and then we had dear friends who came knocking at our door because we were renting our house, we're gonna rent the house out. Yeah. And um, they were looking for a place. And wouldn't you know, they're probably the best Christians I know. And they came knocking on our door one day and um, uh, asked us what church we belonged to. And Rusty said, well, we're Mormon, but searching. And they knew then it was time for prayer. And we prayed and wow. Rusty will say that was the day he was saved. And our life has been pretty glorious ever since. As, as yeah, as praise it. God, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have so much freedom in Christ. Well, did you ever try to prove uh, Rusty? Uh, was there ever anything he brought up that you said, you know, I, I need to check that out or I need to look and see if you're telling me the truth? Or No, that ever? I just didn't want to hear it. I was done. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to be in control. I wanted to know the church was but true. But you wanted to hear good news. Yeah, but I yeah. did say, if you can tell me something positive. Yeah. And so, and of course, a lot of the things came flooding back from when I was a Baptist. and um, Things that you'd heard Christian, as a, a younger yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. But what really disturbed me was I couldn't stand a liar. I couldn't stand people who lies. And here I found out that Joseph Smith had copied some of the Book of Mormon. I mean, of the Bible, of the and put Bible in the Book of Mormon. Into the Book of Mormon, yeah. And Rusty had always questioned when the Book of Isaiah was put in the Book of Mormon. He was telling me about that one day, and I go, ah, so that's, he was just inspired, you know. But then when all this started coming together, I was really ticked. I really said, you know, he must have lied. Yeah. And then, so it made sense that the eighth article of faith was, you know, we believe you know, the Bible, as long as it's translated correctly. What a joke, <laughs> because it is correct, and he told us not to read it, because if I'd read it all along, I wouldn't have been listening to Joseph Smith. I'd be listening to Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. Though when we came out, and I still went out to California for a couple of months, Yeah. he studied like crazy, and I studied and came back. We had a honeymoon, and it's been bliss ever since. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about your first experience going to a Christian church. Well, that was kind of weird. Now, after, I mean, <laughs> after you'd been a Mormon for so long, I mean. Well, it wasn't as bad as it might be for some people. It's far different because yeah. I'd been to a Baptist church, but you know, we sang the old rugged cross and the yeah. hill far away. And yeah. again, our friends, they brought us to um, Calvary. <laughs> Calvary Chapel. Yeah. Oh. The thing I, the only thing I could write to there was I could tell the preacher was a biker and we were, we had gotten a motorcycle and we liked to bike. Yeah. <laughs> and the songs were great. You know, I liked the songs, you know, I just have fun wherever I go. Did it, so, did it feel like you were worshiping Jesus in a different way? <laughs> I just kept knowing it felt good, but it wasn't like an aha. It was like this is okay. Yeah. This is good to do. It's okay. Yeah. And I the thing is I saw my husband come alive. And that was so great. He had been so discouraged for so long. What do you, yeah. I guess we'll hear, hear his story someday, I, so, I hope. But <laughs> when he <yeah>. retires. <laughs> but uh, is he, 
you're saying changes, but what kind of specifically that? Just happier. Just he knew that you know he knew that, that like guilt God was lived. off of his shoulders. Yes, you mean, yeah. and he was more free to. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he was just eating up the word. He's become a gospel scholar. Studies the Bible inside and out four or five yeah. times. He can tell you anything. And you were talking earlier about your frustration in the temple. Is that gone now? Do you do you feel? Oh yeah, yeah. But I you know I get a little. Um, I, no, everything, God has a purpose for everything, you know, and we used to say, we used to sit there and look at each other and go, why 40 years, 40 years in the wilderness? I got to write a book, 40 years in the wilderness. <laughs> That's a good and, title. Know, and then finally I said, we made it to the promised land. Yeah. Let's forget the last 40 years. We made it to the promised land. God has a reason yeah. for the way, for what he did. Exactly. And you know, I, that's not to, some of my kids are still very LDS and that's not to, Donate that in any way because yeah. you know I think I would have had those children anyway. I love those children sure. dearly. I love them more than I've ever loved them. Yeah. You know, and yeah. um, um, well, uh, well, the hard part was that some of them said, you know, we've lost the spirit. You know, I know I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Those that stay active, what do they say? Yeah, no, they wrote us a letter, told us we've lost You've the lost spirit. lost the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, the way we came out, I was just so excited. And I'll tell you, I was a very faithful person. My kids call me the rock. Yeah. So I thought when I came out and told them, they'd be jumping for joy. <laughs> That's what I thought, actually. <laughs> you did, too. Yeah. yeah. Did you, yeah, did you sense that they thought you never had a testimony? Have you no, heard that one? No. They said, what they about your testimony? Because you, I wore my you, testimony all the time. Knew, they knew you had a testimony. Except I'd always bear my testimony that I knew Jesus was the Christ. Oh. I thought Joseph Smith was a prophet. Yeah. You know, I would like to believe he was. I mean, how could a 14-year-old see God and, you know, know that about the word of wisdom? Yeah. Unless he didn't. Unless he was a, yeah. a prophet or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, so. you, in sharing some things with me, you, you wrote a very interesting thing. Would you read the l title there and then a few of those thoughts mm. that you had? I think it's just so interesting. Well, you had said, what did you, what have you given up in exiting the LDS church? Yeah. And I said, um, I'd like to say what I gave up by joining the LDS Church. Yeah, a, a different twist. And I no. think it's, these are, so this is what you gave up to join the church. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I was 16, and then shortly after I just left, then got married in the temple. And so I gave up my friends and family. And um, I remember the day I left home and my mom crying because she couldn't go to, she'd never see me again, probably. Um, and she couldn't go to the... And she'd never be able to go to my temple wedding, which I was going to go to, even though I had dear, dear friends. Oh. And the thought that my f friends and family would never be in the celestial kingdom with me because unless they joined the church. And some of them were drinkers and smokers, and so therefore... They were never going to get to yeah. the celestial kingdom. That's By the way, I gave up coffee. Oh, you know? <laughs> <a> big thing. <laughs> that was a big deal. I'd already quit smoking and drinking oh. already, but yeah. that was good. That was a good thing. You yeah. know, I, I, I praise God for that. So yeah. I just figured after spending a lifetime with my husband and training him right, then he'd get all these other wives that would have it easy. <laughs> so you gave up a uh, single husband is yeah. what, what you gave up. Okay. What else? Anything? Uh, garments. Okay. Duh. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because even in the church, and maybe not everybody does this, but I think we do, um, you wear garments, and yeah. I look around to see who else is wearing them, who's not when yeah. they're talking to me, what yeah. they know by what garments they wear, because yeah. you can really tell, you know. A lot of judging goes along yeah. with that, Yeah, it? judging and gossip. Oh, a lot of pride. Oh, lot of pride. Just, yeah, pride, gossip. It was yeah. not good. And um, fear. Oh, my gosh, fear that Satan would get me if I didn't do everything right. If I, you know, if I rolled up my garments underneath my sleeves in the summertime, yeah. things like that, even though I, you know, I did that. Yeah. Um, you know, the hours I spent in the temple, you know, when I could have been serving people in different ways. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, I guess the other thing, you know, baptism for the dead, as if I could save anyone. Can't even save myself. Only yeah, Jesus don't can. We, isn't that funny where we think we're yeah. the ones doing the saving and... Yeah. It's a strange twist, isn't it? It is. I always thought it was kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. My oldest daughter told me after we came out, she said I, uh, she was never active in the church. And we gave her a hard time about that. And oh, sure. I'd make her go do baptisms. You're judging her. Yeah. yeah. I'd make her do baptisms for the dead. And she said every time she came up, she'd say, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, but um, I think I spent more time worshiping Joseph and the prophets than Jesus. Oh, I think so. I yeah. think it's all yeah. about the church and stuff. Yeah. Well, how, how do you feel about uh, uh, Jesus now? Compared? Oh, I love him. He's my Lord and Savior, and I'm just free in Christ. And it's so cool. He's still my best friend. He's the guy who put his arms around me when I was just a kid crying in my bed. Yeah. Yeah. And so. You've always had a love for God, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't really know him. I didn't know the Bible enough to to learn about him and I have so much more to learn but I have a personal relationship with him. And, and did you ever feel that ex you ever feel that during those 38 years or 43 in I the did. church? I did. You did. I did. I believe Jesus was my savior that he died for my sins. So yeah. that was special that you'd had that before yeah. you joined the church. I just thought I, I had more than everybody else. I had Jesus plus Joseph. Oh, okay. See? Yeah. yeah. So So that was so were your prayers any different Are now they, yeah. than they were then? Oh, yeah. It used to be all about me. Now it's about Jesus. Oh. You know, and bless me this, bless me that. Yeah. You know, I did this, I did that. Thank wow. you. But now it's thank you, God. Praise God. And he's so much bigger than I ever imagined in the Mormon church. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is different, isn't it? He's just big. Yeah. He's great. All things are possible. Him. Well, we've only got a minute or okay. so left. What What do you say to the LDS people, your family, friends? and? Mm. I think the biggest thing is just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to question. If it's true and you question, it'll still be true. Yeah, if it's true. It's, but, you know, it's don't not. be afraid. Don't be afraid in the temple that you're not doing it right because, you know, look and see who's in charge there, really, you know? And uh, don't be afraid to just sit and speak to the Spirit and speak to God. You don't have to be doing all the time. You know, sometimes yeah. doing keeps us from what really counts. And I know you love the Bible now. Oh, I love the yeah. Lord. I love the Bible. Read the Bible. I would say just pick up the Bible, read the book of John, John. or Romans, yeah. or any of the New Testament, you yeah. know, and, and just ask God for yourself. Just ask. And uh, it's okay. If the church is true, it'll still be true, but it's not. Yeah. And they'll, so. they'll see something probably in the Bible that they've never seen before. Exactly. And yeah. they'll see where it's been copied and, yeah. you know, and the truth is truth, is truth wherever yeah. you go. And it's simple. Yeah. It's so simple. And people say, well, you make it sound so simple. Well, it is. Yeah. And well, and we have so. a trust in Christ now yeah. that we just never had before. Right. Uh, and I love him more than ever. Maybe you did, but I sure didn't. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, that's the biggest fallacy. You know, they give you in the, you know, well, now that you're not a Mormon, you can uh, do whatever yeah. you want, sin and do whatever you want. Yeah. No. I, I believe that I, we're, uh, I love God more than I ever did before. Sorry, Barbara. We're okay. actually out of time. Thanks so much for Thank coming. Thank you. We'll see you, see you next week here on the Ex-Mormon. Wow.